so now once i've chosen uh, chosen that i could i would want to go for uh, two to four pre decoder or three to eight pre decoder or every such thing huh you can decide on whether you want to use static decoding or dynamic decoding static decoding is simple and it is robust hmm to to re reduce setup time you know you will end up uh, using slightly bigger sizes probably at times and stuff like that and overall system would be because static static gates have larger area than dynamic gates so static would be larger possibly a little more power than the dynamic decoding in the dynamic decoding as we discussed earlier also the total number of connections that any output would see so this is i'm just showing dynamic post decoding over here so i have routed the clock but you see now the addresses are no longer required to go to the pmoses so i save capacitance and i save power and i save area as i reduce capacitance i also improve performance so typically you will see that in memories there will be a mix of static decoding and dynamic decoding in applications such as automotive applications where safety is a very big concern you probably would not want to go to dynamic decoding at all because of these challenges that we have with uh, dynamic gates otherwise if the if the reliability require reliability any if the if the error sensitivity is not that high you can ask, actually go for dynamic decoding hmm? but then tell me one thing do you want nor based decoding or nand based decoding what is preferred sir nor based decoding nor based decoding is preferred why Uh, sir, maybe the NMOS stack, uh, whichever it is, sir, uh, uh, all the NMOSs will be parallel. So the signal, there is no need for the signal to travel along the entire stack as in case of NAND. So it will be faster for sure. Yes. What is the loss then, Ranjit? Sir, area loss is there, sir. Area loss. Why? Area will be same, no, sir, for both NOR based and NAND based. Uh, not necessarily. If I am making this dynamic NAND. then because in a nor case the stack size would be less a three input nor would have let us say three units of area but if i have a three input stack uh, so a0 a1 and a2 a stack of four there then the area would be say a little more because i need to make all my devices larger for same delay or similar delay okay oh uh, yes sir so Uh, we can't say that norm area bada hoga that is not an obvious outcome sir uh, in nor if there is any glitch on the input side then our out output might get uh, and like it might get discharged when my clock is high okay so it, so it is it is more sensitive to noise yes even this one is so the glitch need not come on a0 a1 the noise could come directly on the output and it it, it would be sensitive Hmm. but nor would be more sensitive what else what are the what are the shortcomings of nor see uh being dynamic gates they are always pre charged to one the output is always pre charged to one am i right yes sir in a nor case you you would want to discharge all the all those uh, address bits where there is even a single one in the addresses uh, and only one of the rows the output would not discharge are you able to see this so if there are 1k decoders 1023 decoders out of them will have this this node x let us say we call this node as uh, the internal node as x for 1023 out of 1024 cases this x node would discharge in the nor setting whereas in the nand setting only one of them will discharge so 
so this is not clear sir i mean so why it will discharge for that what how does nor function nor says any one of them is one discharge the output and give the output to be zero is it not yes sir yes sir so when you make the address bus you would you would want so what happens is someone would be one anyways for 1023 out of 1024 rows finally you want to select only one row na so except that one row 1023 rows some some of the at least a few of these n mosses would be one it means all those 13 1023 would discharge how does the nand operate on the other hand nand says only when both are one only in that case i will discharge this would be the case only for one row so only one row will consume dynamic power and nor every row except the selected one will consume dynamic power so but the tail nmos will stop that discharge right if because i can tail feed the clock only clock tail yes, nmos only evaluate so when the clock comes all the one k cells will discharge that okay, is what yeah. we call it dynamic power na as soon as the clock comes 1023 out of 1024 will discharge are you able to see this yes there is a power penalty yeah so the power penalty is so prohibitive so prohibitive that unless you are really dying for that kind of speed and and you will notice that the speed is not very different you can simply size this up a bit and you can recover and get the similar speed you can do pre decoding and post decoding in such a way that the final land weight stack is not very tall and everything hmm uh there are ways to design these nand gates in such a way that the overall stacking is reduced but the power consumption in a nor is so high that you do not want to use it unless you are dying for speed okay so what we have just looked looked at in this section is uh how to split the decoding in hierarchical architectures as we said you could split them across rows and you would call them hierarchical bit lines or you could split them across word lines and you would call them as pages hmm so banks or pages then how is the area timing power performance ppa you know different across uh, these various hierarchical decisions then what about pre decoders 2 to 4 pre decoders or 3 to 8 pre decoders each has a different impact on area different impact on power and also performance then what mix of static and dynamic gates to use what kind of final decoder do you want the final decoder to be static dynamic what is the application or what is the product in which your design is going to be used if it is automotive for example where safety is a very big concern you do not want to accept any failure you want to have extremely extremely high noise immunity you would want to go for static decoding completely no no dynamic decoding anywhere hmm so any questions around this this is what we have already discussed uh sir actually when you were discussing the 2 to 4 decoder pre decoder and the 3 to decoder then the area power kind of uh trade off was evident but sir the access time how that was not evident because how i'm producing is it at the pre decoding level or at the because of the post decoding effect it has that is we discuss na if we have smaller pre decoders and the setup time would be less but because of more number of lines the nand gate and the post decoding will be longer so the access time would get impacted we talked about this uh so so i mean pre uh, when i'm using uh, say 2 to 4 pre decoder then my pre decoding is faster but post decoding is kind of slow can be slower because you increase the stack size in your post decoder okay so sir like uh, then finally how would be evaluating basically the ppa you tell me how would you do how would you do which tools do you have what tools you do you have what have i taught you to to be able to do this you hmm? already done a tool we just talked about it also in the class it's a logical effort yeah oh.
है ना लॉजिकल एफर्ट टेल्स यू एग्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग ना हाउ इज द डिले एंड हाउ इज द एरिया चेंजिंग so but will that load also impact the kind of post recording yes okay is that is what i am showing on this slide how do you size so you have to estimate all the loads including metal load and device load hmm you have to size the final driver in such a way that uh see if my word line capacitance is 250 femtofarads hmm you may think that okay For hundred femtofarads, I had a road decoder final driver size of ten microns by five microns. For two fifty, I will go to twenty five and twelve point five. It's two point five times, so I will just increase the size two point five times. But you will see it won't work. Why? Because due to self loading, some performance gain would be limited. Then there is a huge RC component when I am talking about two fifty femtofarads of capacitive load. the word line is a, uh, is a very thin wire there is a also a huge resistance if it comes to 250 femtofarads of capacitive load then the resistance would also be significantly high so this rc will limit any gains that you may want to have because of larger post decoder so the final driving size has to be done carefully and leakage is one of the very very big criteria to define how to size this driver so the entire remaining part of the road decoder could be lvt low vt ha huh? but the final driver will be high vt because how many final drivers are there if it is a 1k row memory instance and there are 1k word line drivers and and if you make them very very big they are going to leak terribly bad so even as you make them big you make them lvt or you make them high vt also so that at least their leakage comes under control you get you get a good performance but the leakage comes under control okay yes, then sir. in logical effort we also saw that tapering would help and uh, buffering would help so uh, we also discussed that uh, the stage ratio that you may want to keep for such loaded rc lines need not be 2 or 3 it can be as good as 5 or 6 also so that you don't waste leakage you don't waste area and there is minimal power minimal performance impact we looked at that aspect also hmm so again i understand that how many of you have not done the course on uh, uh, dvd the dvd course can you just put a plus one in the chat window okay so at least everyone in the class who is present in the class today has done that course but those of you who are not in the class but would want to study from the lectures i would say you will have to watch one more extra video now which is the logical effort video okay so just one thing so are you calling the word line signal as the global signals here no i am also calling the pre decoding outputs as global signals okay hmm now word line is all definitely a global signal but even pre recorded outputs are global signals okay so so typically what is done is we saw you know in the previous example i just showed that there are these four lines and then there is a tapping done like this and then there is a nand gate where this is connected and so on hmm so in reality in reality what is done is uh, the tapping like this nand gate is designed like this so there is a spmos uh, which would get the clock and then the nmos is 
are placed something like this so that they connect to a0 a1 so what is happening over here a0 bar a1 bar a2 bar a3 bar so this is word line 0 this one is word line 1 word line 2 word line 3 and so on are you able to see this so this precharge bar can also be considered as clock clock for the dynamic gate there so the the dot that was shown there could actually simply mean that there is a there is a mosfet placed beneath that line so what am i doing i am doing i am doing uh, programmation by placing a device under a line wherever it is needed are you able to see this any questions this is one kind of programmation Sir, yeah. here, uh, sir, here, uh, as we are connecting the precharge to the PMOS, the PMOS should be weaker than the NMOS stack, right? Uh, so, uh, Ranjit, this is dynamic gate. So, when the clock comes, the PMOS will anyway turn off. Okay, correct. Yes, sir. Hana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the clock comes, PMOS will automatically. So, we are not talking, talking about ratio design over here. Sir, but in, usually in the dynamic, uh, dynamic gates, we uh, place the um, uh, a restorer, right? Weak restores, uh, weak restorer. There would be a restorer also, but that is not a so that I'm I'm only showing programmation over here, Ranjit. So there would okay. be many other things. There would be buffers also. There would be so many things. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yes, okay. Sir. Yeah, the restorer would be there. There will be an inverter also at the output of our line. Something, all those things will be there. Okay, sir. just to show the programmation part. Hmm? 